Hey YouTube, it's time for another video. Today I want to do a quick updated video on one I put out last year for people wanting to start modding Cyberpunk 2077. I'll go ahead and put that first video's link up here in the top right corner if you want to check that out, but I will be covering everything that was in that video as well as pointing out some new things that should help you better manage your Cyberpunk mods. So what's changed since last year? Not much to be honest. After the release of Red Mod by CD Projekt Red, modders jumped all over the chance to dive into the game files and learn the mechanics and coding for the game. The great thing about this was the timing. This was when Edge Runners had hit Netflix and Cyberpunk 2077 had a resurgence and CD Projekt Red finally felt comfortable that the game was actually in a good state. So what kind of mods can you find for Cyberpunk 2077 here in 2023? It's like every other game, it really depends what you're looking for. There are a lot of mods out there trying to do a lot of really cool things, but to date you're not going to find anything on the level of modding that you would find in the Elder Scrolls or Fallout series. The desire for it to reach that level is definitely there, but as of yet there hasn't been that huge breakthrough that opens up the depth of things such as quest mods, companion mods, DLC sized content that one would find in Skyrim Fallout 4. Instead, you're going to see a lot of mods that add scripting functions for other modders to use, foundation mods that will help other modders build and create new things so that they can add it to the game. And these mods are really tools that are specifically made to help others more easily script and to add in new content and create more in-depth mods. So yeah, modding for this game is very much still in its infancy. And again, like all games, there's gonna be your typical appearance mods. There's gonna be, you know, the bigger boob mods, of course, it's to be expected. There's lots of new clothing options and body makeovers, a lot of mods adding in new vehicles and changes to the amount of cyberware that you can wear. What I find to be the best mods and most stable mods right now are ones that really focus on the feeling and environment of Night City. So yeah, those immersive mods. Mods adding more text messages and conversations from some of the main NPCs throughout the story. There are mods that add to some of the nightclubs, there's apartments you can rent, there's an amazing mod that lets you add and build and control NPCs in the game if you want to do photo shoots or if you want to make videos with it. And really, a lot of the leading mods right now are the ones pushing that immersive nature and building on the interactions players can have and come across in the game. So getting started, first thing to note is that you should not be installing any Cyberpunk 2077 mods with any kind of mod manager. No Mod Organizer 2 and no Vortex. There are some mods that will run perfectly fine using them, but a majority of the mods can and will run into issues. Most of the mod authors state directly to manually install only. And this is very easy to do as we will go over that here in the next step. But what you are going to lose out on is the organization and ease that comes with using a mod manager. Now organization is key to a well running modded game. So because of this, I strongly suggest that you create a document in something like Notepad or just use your sticky notes on your desktop and keep track of the mods that you're adding to the game as well as putting the date or the version number of the mod and then keeping this updated as you update or change mods. This is going to keep your mind fresh on what you have added in the game as well as give you a nice clear resource to manage your own mod list. And as an added bonus, this is likely going to make you much more familiar with modding Cyberpunk or any other game for that matter. Those of us that have modded for years probably already understand this, but for those of you newer to modding and maybe always having used a mod manager, seeing the actual process should enlighten you to the very simple, fundamental aspects of what you're doing every time you add a mod to your game. And the more you understand, the better off you're going to be. Now, let's get to modding. First, you'll want to install Red Mod, and this will change depending on which, where you purchased your game at. So you're going to go ahead, head over to the web page. I'll put that on the screen as well as pin and link it in the comments. And then you're going to find the version that you have. You have GOG here, Steam version here, and finally Epic. Install it from the game's page and you are good to go. If you are interested in making mods for Red Mod or if you want to learn about stuff like that, you can find the additional files at the bottom of the page. Some mods are made for Red Mod while other mods are not. The pages will notify you and let you know whenever you're looking up a mod and you can decide which version you want to download. But more or less, the installation for it is the same. You're going to open it up. After you download it, you're going to drag it into the correct folder and you're going to drop it. For mods, we're going to go over to the Nexus. Again, I'll be linking this in the description and pinned in the top comment. And since I already know which one I'm going to download, I can go up here to the category, then over to characters and easily find it. One thing I suggest if you are just learning mods and you're just getting used to looking around and seeing what you want, definitely use the filter system. Just because a mod has a lot of downloads doesn't mean it's always good. In fact, most of the time, it only means that the mod has been around longer than others. And some older mods aren't always maintained. 
mod authors move on or some give up and they just randomly abandon them. You can sort by a date range and you can even pick a specific date. You can also sort by the most endorsed, the most downloaded, but my preferred method is going with trending. This will show you mods that are currently trending and receiving a lot of attention, and those are both new and old mods, unless you set a restriction on the filter to a certain date. If not, it'll go all the way back and just pick anything that's currently trending, so new mods that are updated, old mods that are updated, brand new mods that are really hot and popular. Since I already know which one I want, I'm going to leave it set as all time, and then come up and sort by endorsements. And the one I want is the very top mod, and this is a clothing store mod. It's going to add stores into the game that you can access from different computers. The very first thing you want to do is fully read the description page. The mod author is going to tell you everything that you need to know about the mod, what it does, what things in the game it will affect, and this mod here is a framework for other modders. This allows them to add virtual stores in game and allows them to inject their own items and clothing into this virtual store. And it also allows players to preview clothing items on their character before purchasing in stores and preview any in-game item models that are in their inventory. On the pages most time there will be info on how to install as well as uninstall the mod and if it's even safe to do so. Some will have videos and other useful information. You can and should always check the post section as well to read comments from users as well as see any updated pin posts from the mod creator himself. This allows you to see if a mod has a lot of issues, if people love it, maybe people hate it, if there's questions from users, any questions that they have, it can help make you decide if the mod is going to be a good choice and if it's going to be something that's going to fit in your playstyle. You then want to check requirements to be sure that you have any dependencies that may be needed. We see here that this mod requires RedScript as a hard dependency, and then it requires two others, Codeware and Red EXT, and those are optional. This means that you can get by without the two optional mods, but parts of the mod may not work as intended, or some parts of it may be different, or things may look completely different. If it's a clothing mod and you don't download all the textures, it may say you don't need them, but that certain item isn't going to look exactly like what you see in the mod. The more familiar you get with modding, the more often you'll know right away what kind of changes will happen if you exclude the optional dependencies. I'm going to go ahead and manually download, and then I'm going to do the same for all three of its dependencies. Again, when you go to these, make sure you read the mod page, check for any other further dependencies, and then again, go ahead and download. Now, with the mod and its three dependencies downloaded, we are going to jump over, open the folder where the downloads are found, as well as the main Cyberpunk 2077 folder. I have my downloads over here on the right. I have the Cyberpunk folder over here on the left. Then, depending on what you're using to open the files, you can either double click and open, or you can right click and choose Extract To. Again, make sure that you have the Cyberpunk folder open here over on the left. And we're simply going to select these two files here. We're going to drag these files over like so, and we're going to drop them in. With this mod, we saw that there are two folders, the engines folder and the R6 folder. This is where all the files for the mod are located. And when you drop them into the game folder, they will copy into the correct locations. And if the folder doesn't exist, it will be created when you drop the files in. And you can see the destination folders in the main Cyberpunk folder because they will be highlighted after you drag and drop them. Then we will do the same thing with the other two dependencies. Drag, drop, drag and drop. And then finally, we'll drop the virtual store in and that is all there is to it. And hopefully this helps some of you out and gets maybe get some of you guys back into cyberpunk and uh i really do hope that you take my advice especially if you're newer to modding and even even people that are veterans if you're not going to be using a mod manager like organizer or vortex you really do need to keep track of what mods you have installed in the game what versions you have i know nexus mods does let you know when mods update but you don't really know if you're just dropping them in there because it's not going to be telling you the version number so again use something keep track of what you got keep track when you update things and as always everybody have fun and i will see you guys in the next video